Rob, congratulations on the win. It wasn't a vintage performance, but in the first round, was this about the result for you? Yeah, don't get me wrong, performance-wise, I'm not very happy. Um, I, I don't even know yet where I found that 114 to win that second set. I thought, I'm under the cosh, I've got a fine saying from the clouds, and then all of a sudden, last start tops goes in. Not most of my favourites at times, but it got better last set. Um, I, did, I was more infused with the crowd tonight, I think, or, or today. I um, thought they were amazing. Come out, they're all chanting, I got into that, and before you know it, I forgot to throw darts. <laughs> You mentioned the 114 to win that second set. Is that what separates the good players from the world class players? Even when you're not at your best, you can still pull out a moment like that? Yeah, in my opinion, there ain't many what can really do it in the world still. Maybe maybe 16, maybe 20. I'm not too sure I can put a number on it, but it was it was changing in the game for what it was. And yeah, when when that went in and come out, and then you're watching the last set, I was I'm steady as a rock, really. And even as a former world champion, you still get the same nerves and the same butterflies when you walk onto that stage? <laughs> Actually, I found them worse than when I've ever had them. You know, I don't, I don't know yet whether it's a month not not playing back on the TV or whatever, and having a few weeks just to myself and trying to ready myself. But um, yeah, I got I got so infused in the crowd. And like I said, I just sort of forgot to throw darts. You know, but very grateful to be through. Very um, yeah. In a way, I'm I'm happy, but I'm not. But yeah. He missed a few bits and, and just move forward now. I can get Christmas out of the way, I can come back and hopefully I can be a different animal when I come back and all. And this performance aside, do you feel like coming into the event you're playing some of the best darts you've played for a number of years? I've been playing great. I think that's rubbish really to what I played, you know. But um, look, if you don't switch off and you don't do the right sort of things at the right times, um, he let me off and all. Usually, if you have a first set like that, no disrespect, you usually get bitten, you usually lose that set. And then that second set's more important to come out and actually put a decent set in. And, and winning the set when, when I wasn't at my best maybe, maybe didn't help me mentally. I know I still come out fairly similar to the way I was first set. And next round for you, either the Jose D'Souza or Jeffrey DeGraff, any preference in terms of the podium? Couldn't care. Couldn't care. Um, Look, both both quality players. I think Jeffrey's been away from the scene for a little while, um, and Jose, he can either be brilliant or or, or sort of yeah normal. Um, but but for me, it's it's more my performance. It's it's not it's not about that. If I come out and I perform to the way I am and and the way I have been, I feel a lot lot happier. And obviously, I believe I'm going to beat anyone in the tournament. Cheers. Rob, congratulations. Did you maybe try too hard to lay down a marker here this afternoon? No, not with a 70 first set. Definitely not, you know. It's, um, I, I, I come out, I, I don't know, just, just on the walk-on sort of took me over really, you know. The nerves crept in, I thought, oh, I'm all right on the walk-on here. And then all of a sudden I heard the sort of the cheer of the crowd and other stuff. Um, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed that more. More than more than the game, really. Um, but no, sort of separating the two. The game, the game wasn't there early, so I got away with one. Last couple of days, there's a few big names and seeds dropped out of the top half of the draw. Is that something that you take notice of in your preparation? I watched. I've watched a few games just to sort of try and get in the mood, just to try and sort of infuse yourself in it, you know. Because you watch it on TV, you think it's amazing. Um, but, but at the same time, it's not really important to me. Usually I don't watch a lot of darts. I try and stay away of it or, or away from it. Leighton usually says to me, he goes to me, oh, oh, did you see this, Dad? Did you see that? And I'm like, no, mate, what happened? You know, so um, it's the sort of back home, yeah, I try and sort of get away, get away from it. You won here on day, you got all the headlines from your performances. Luke Whitler did similar last night what advice can you give to him having been in that situation that boy don't need any advice and the, what i would say look you follow your path and wherever your path's going to lead it's going to happen it's, it's written in the stars really you know um you can't fight fate i would say that and um he's look 16 years old well literally he come out he done a job last night he's i don't know when he plays again when does tonight. oh does he play tonight so 
yeah, it's going to be a bit of a different task against Andrew being a bit slower. But at the same time, I, I met this boy, I think, when he was 11. He had a bigger moustache than me at 11, you know. So I said to him, you definitely ain't 11, you know. He can grow a better one than me. But um, he's just purely amazing. And, and he just takes it all in his own stride. He's, look, he's a breath of fresh air, I really must say. He's going to be good for the game. I think he's going to be great. But... Yeah, maybe this year, maybe next year, but I don't know. But he's definitely got the minerals for it. Rob, congratulations. Cheers. You talk about Luke there. Do you think some people have suggested that, that he could win this tournament? Do you think he's, he's got that in him? Oh, look, how could you doubt him? Debut, 106 and sank, I think. Um, how could you doubt him? And, and he's so calm. He's so collected. He just, look, he just does, does what he needs to do. And, and that, that on its own is special and and the way look the way he does an interview afterwards he's doing a better interview last night than what I'm doing now you know so you got to look at him he's he's going to be superb um I for me I wouldn't like to put too much pressure on him but he's he's going to have the weight on him and if he don't look he won't feel it like me first year that 114 checkout was pretty special to get yourself out of a hole that said, did that really turn the tide deeper? Yeah, I think I think it was a kick, obviously, um, for yeah, for Trico. Um, he didn't play bad. He, he scored all right at places, missed a load of doubles first set. Couldn't believe it, standing there. But um, but realistically, sort of get to the second set, get to that crunch time when he's left a double and it goes in. It changes the game for me. I'll go back in. It, it, it wasn't really... I suppose being 2 0 up for me at that point, yeah, it's all about winning sets and winning games. I think it was it was more the fact that I actually done something right when I needed it, if that makes sense. So um, when I did come back out, I was better last set, and and that's more like it to the way I expect to play. Look, it's um, yeah, a couple of days off now because I might have might have overdone my practice a little bit, you know, a little bit tight there in the throw and all. So that needs to change. Thank you. Seeing all the hype around Luke and on debut, does that remind you of that first year for you? Does that inspire you to go on and think, I, I want to do that again, you know, before, before Luke takes over? <laughs> <laughs> nah, not really. Look, Luke's Luke and, and Bobby's Bobby. It's, it's just the way it is. It's, um, it's a fact of life, you know. You're going to do these things when they're ready and, and when they come out and, and where the game is. I didn't really show me best today, but that boy's buzzing, and um, he's he's gonna be, he's gonna have a great tournament minimum. He's gonna learn a load, go in there and and come out with more experience at the end. So good for him, and wherever he reaches, fair play to him. But for me, yeah, it's all the improvement now. Thank you. Cheers. Rob, you've been thrown in the same quarter as the world champion and one, one Michael Smith. But a lot of people are saying that you are the favourite to come through it, given the form that you've been in. Do you feel like the favourites can come through? I do. Look, Michael, Michael's a great player. He's won the World Championship this year so well. He's done everything what's been asked of him. Um, I think I never really realised until I won it that that actually it's a different commitment. I, I don't think anyone will realise that, that commitment until they win it. And um, he's, he's held it well, you know. Um, don't get me wrong. I, d I like playing Mike, he's, he's a great player, you know what you have to do, you know what, how you've got to perform, but um, I, I wouldn't really particularly put myself favourite, you know, I have to be on it, and if I'm on it, I've got every chance to turn the tide and get it, get it going in my favour. You mentioned that you're not happy with the performance, we do get a lot of people saying that they're not happy, but the win is the most important thing. When you won your World Championship, you survived a few match that early on and then you peaked right at the right moment in the centres and the final. So do you know more than anyone just how important it is just to get over the line and then take care of business next door? Yeah, the thing is, obviously, um, you get lifelines and stuff and then, and then you survive to live another day, you know, and a different day is good enough. And it will be for me this week. I'd, I won't come out and play like that again. I will put that out there. I don't believe... That is it. I did get sucked in today, but it wouldn't happen next time. And it's going over even longer format, so I can relax a little bit more. And um, yeah, maybe maybe get me practice right. But realistically, I have a couple of days off now. 
maybe overdone the practice and um, just loosen up really because the game's there. We've seen a lot of former champions already, Michael Van Gogh and Price and Tim Peter right on this stage. And they all played in the evening. You as a former world champion, do you feel like it's almost disrespectful to play in the afternoons of posted evening session? Ah, not really. I think um, you look at that, I hit a, what do I hit, an 89 or whatever. Luke Litter deserved an evening last night. He averaged 106. Other players, they've played better. They've they played better in the evening. I'm not really too bothered when I play. It's all about just sort of getting past Christmas in a way. Um, don't get me wrong. I would have liked a better performance, um, but I never got it. And and sometimes it's tough luck, isn't it? Sometimes you just don't get what you want in life, you know. But I'm still here. I'm still pitching, and um, I'll move on and. And I'll still keep giving me best for the next one. Well, big well done, see you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Rob, uh, that looks quite a comfortable win for you. Is that welcomed, or would you prefer to be more pushed in those early rounds to get you focused? Nah, longer format, I feel a lot happier. That's, that's, that's what it's all about for me, you know. Um, I would yeah, I'd love to play better, but um, look, you win 3 0, you get what you get. And um, it's, it's all about just moving forward now. Just. Next couple of days, have a little chill, get back on the board, and I'll be a lot smoother for that. So um, I just, yeah, just, just sort of really get through, you know.